I'm just in here, laptop open, I've got a coffee going, some music, and I'm gonna get on with the day. So that's my first three days in Dubai done. It's been a really good few days and I was joined by my friend Phil from London who joined me the day after I arrived. And we ended up going on tours with Mayra Tours, which were, they were really, really good. Uh, we went on a desert safari, uh, we did the dune buggying, uh, we did jet skiing with them and it literally occupied two days for us. There's things to do at every price point as well, which is really good to see. I, I did think that Coming to a place like Dubai, it may be something where people who are operating on a budget may be really limited in what they can do, but it's definitely not the case. The Desert Safari, for example, was 250 uh, dirhams, which is, what, 45 pounds, something like that, about $55, $60 per person. And the only thing that you had to pay extra for if you wanted to do it was dune bugging. Now, in our group, we were the only ones who actually ended up doing the dune buggying. So Mayra Tours upgraded us to a personal driver because otherwise everyone else in the groups would have had to have waited around for us for an hour to go on the dune buggy. So they upgraded us for free, didn't charge us anything else uh, to do that. And we had our own driver for the, for the whole day uh, while everyone else went off and did other things. So honestly, I still can't believe that everything else that was included was literally about 45 quid, about $60. I, I couldn't believe that. The, the dune bugging was like 1300 extra. It's a couple of hundred, it's a couple of hundred pounds or so. It was worth it. Honestly, I've never done it before. It was really fun. And the jet skiing as well. What was that? 400 dirhams each. For half an hour for the, for the jet skiing. The, the whole jet skiing thing takes quite a bit longer than the 30 minutes when you're drying off and well they did a little what they call a safety briefing and drying off and stuff. So one of the things on safety is they took safety seriously which was really good to see. Particularly coming from like a western country you know you've heard of things like we go to certain countries they'll just literally here's a key here's a jet ski go on. Now, had they done that, I would have just probably done it anyway, and I would have absolutely crapped my pants because honestly, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be, jet skiing, but also like the dune bugging and stuff like that, you know, they gave you a proper safety briefing, and more importantly, they had a guide with you in the dune bugging, making sure that you're not gonna go off and fall off a bloody side of a, a dune, a sand dune. And same with jet skiing, we had a guide with us the entire way, he took the two of us out, I just thought that was really good uh, to, to see, to be honest with you. I think a lot of people could be worried about that. It's been a long time. It's, in fact, COVID was the last time I went out to a proper nightclub. And honestly, I went to this nightclub called Blah Blah in Dubai Marina. It's the best nightclub I think I've ever been to, like ever. The, the only downside to it was the fact that they had these tables, like these tall tables in the middle of the dance floor. Whereas normally in clubs and stuff, you'd see that they would move them out of the way when it gets busy that would be the only downside but honestly it was it was so it was so nice and the music was great the dj was fantastic the atmosphere was buzzing it cost us a thousand dirhams to get in well it didn't cost a thousand dirhams to get in but the minimum spend was a thousand dirhams so you had to spend a thousand dirhams when you get in they give you a little table and there's a server that will come to you and serve you drinks yes that a thousand dirhams is about 220 pounds or 270 dollars but initially i thought well we're never going to spend a thousand dirhams but screw it let's just go in we had a really good time we did actually consume the full thousand dirhams drinks were really well priced so it wasn't like they were ripping you off at all it was definitely on par with sort of local areas of london sort of like eight nine pounds a drink what's that about 10, 11 dollars per drink. The only thing I would say with that is drink water in between your drinks, be responsible people, because it is super hot. Let's remember that there's air con all over the place. Air con sort of can like dehydrate you as well. And then you've got the heat outside. So obviously keep your fluids up. Food wise, awesome food. I mean, we've gone to some expensive places, right? So I get it that not everyone is going to be going to similar places like that, but the food was fantastic. We tried so much stuff, this Lebanese, food just random place we just went up to because we were going to go to some american sort of joint and then we just passed this lebanese thing was like nah let's go there honestly super awesome i'm sure there's probably some footage somewhere of it we've been to this sort of like oriental cuisine on the last night which we'll put up some photos of but yeah it, it wasn't cheap at all but it was really nice i mean i think on average we've probably been spending on on like dinners 
probably about a hundred pounds a head, about $125 a head so far. But that said, and I'll be really clear, that if that sort of made you a bit worried, don't worry at all, because we deliberately went to really nice places. There's places that Phil had been looking at, which were like literally the top rated places in Dubai to eat from like Time Magazine and stuff. And we've been going to uh, some of those places to try out the food. So I think if you're, if you're here for a, quite a while, like I am, there's so many places that you can eat like really cheap for like under 10 pounds for a meal. I honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. So the next thing I'd say is that Dubai Mall, if you're not, and where the Burj Khalifa is, and they've got the fountain show, Honestly, it's awesome. Sometimes it was a bit like, where are the people? We went down there one day and I heard all these things about the Dubai Mall being so packed and busy and all this stuff. And we're like, well, there's literally like no one here. So yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit weird. I don't know what happened. I'm not sure what day it was, but it, whatever, it was in the middle of the day and there was, it was like a ghost town really. It's not, it wasn't quite a ghost town, but it definitely wasn't what I would call busy coming from London. And I thought, well, Maybe it's just like people from the countryside that have been down there that have been thinking, oh, this is really busy. There's like 10 people here. You know, it's not that at all. So we went down there on Saturday night for dinner and we went to see the water show as well, like, because it lights up at night, which there'll be a video of. And honestly, it was really impressive. But the mall was super busy. It was packed, so packed and there were literally families with little kids all over the place and just everyone just going on like as if it was the middle of the day in Westfield in London. It was, it was really odd. I don't know why it was so busy that late at night, particularly on a Saturday. Maybe everyone avoids the heat in the day and they come out and energize at night. That, maybe that's what it is. But so far, honestly, my first three days in Dubai, I think it's a really impressive country. I've probably missed out an absolute shit ton of stuff that I probably could have just said just now. But my first three days, they've been I'm really impressed by the country. I mean, there's so much wealth here, but there's also a lot of very normal day-to-day -day people. And the majority of, you know, if you watch YouTube, you'd think every car going around is a Bugatti or I don't know, Maserati or whatever these posh cars are called. And do you know what? I have seen a few. I've seen like a few Rolls Royces. I've seen a few Ferraris, some other cars. I don't even know the name of, but they're clearly a lot of money. Yes, they are about, but the majority by a long, long, long way are just everyday people in everyday cars. And there's a shitload of taxis, so don't worry about getting around. Impressive country. The only thing I'll say is I have got told off a couple of times and it's not because it's not because of anything weird. It's just because I've decided I'm gonna do that tourist thing for this vlog, uh, start taking photos and filming inside of buildings where I shouldn't been filming. So um, yeah, I've got told off a few times and I've now learned, I think I've learned where it's okay and where it's not okay. And actually what I've been doing more recently where I filmed in a few places is to actually just ask the security there before I do it. Is it okay if I film or take photos or whatever? But there was one of them I got told off again because I, I said, is it right if I take photos and stuff or gesturing on the camera? But then I started recording a video and it was like, photos okay, but filming not okay. So <laughs> I was like, okay, sorry. But yeah, culturally, and this is something I want to cover actually. Culturally, I've heard from a few people who haven't been here by the way. So this is quite typical, right? You get people give their opinion on stuff and they've never actually seen it or tried it or done it or whatever. But they've given their opinion about how culturally it may be very different for a Westerner being in Dubai. I'm not on about anywhere else in the region. I'm on about here in Dubai. There's nothing at all that I've seen where it doesn't feel like I'm in a completely foreign nation where they're like extremely Islamic. I've just felt completely like I'm at home. There's a lot of nationalities around, but to many of you, I come from London. I've worked in central London for many years and I'm very used to that anyway. For girls, particularly, there's girls walking around everywhere in every sorts of clothes that you could imagine. I've seen people walking around like holding hands with no issue, people drinking, obviously not drinking in the street and being stupid, but I have seen people drinking. There's plenty of bars and clubs and everything like that around and they're not hidden. The only thing that I thought that was hidden was there's, a, there's an alcohol shop called the Africa and Middle Eastern, whatever it's called, which was like in a dungeon 
at the bottom of a mall behind a door which looked like a cleaner's cupboard but then you open it and it's just full of alcohol. I couldn't film in there, it says no filming, no photography. Massive sign on the door so I didn't even try it. Other than that, you know, everything else, anyone who's got anything to say about, you know, culturally being a problem for them or for women, I don't, I don't see that, not in Dubai. Perhaps in other places, I'm gonna go on a tour to Abu Dhabi at some point, it might be a bit different there. But I'm sure other parts of the UAE, because, you know, where they're not so Western, will be, you know, would, would have a cultural difference that's noticeable. But so far, Dubai, nah, absolutely fine. There's, there's so much for you to see here, so much for you to do here and I don't think anyone's really going to have a problem with what they do. All I'd say is if you're one of them sort of like football hooligans, you're probably not going to get on very well here. You know, getting drunk and pissed up and shouting in the street and fighting and stuff like that. There's security all over the place. To be honest, I've only actually seen one police car, I think, or two. I saw one on the first day when I was coming in and we saw one yesterday. So up for my recommendations. So there's a few things that I'd recommend. WhatsApp calls don't seem to work. So it looks like it will ring, but then for some reason it blocks it. I don't quite know what that's about. I've heard a VPN would work. I have got a VPN on my phone, I just haven't tried it. Normal calls, if you're calling from your network back in the UK, they're really expensive, about £3.50 a minute. It works out to, which is about, what, $5 a minute. Um, they're really expensive. I would highly recommend you order a Virgin mobile SIM. So it's virginmobile.ae, uh, SIM online before you arrive. I did that and activated at the shop. I don't know what happened with my activation. It seemed like at the shop they couldn't do it for some reason, but I sent a, a live chat message on the Virgin Mobile app that I'd already had on my phone before I came and they sorted it out overnight while I was asleep. So when I woke up in the morning, I had internet. So the Virgin Mobile SIM, it's 125 AEDs. It's about 27 pounds or $34 for 15 gigabytes of data, which is about, and it, but it caps it at 500 megabytes per day. Or for the same price, you can get five gigabytes of data with no cap at all. Um, I accidentally went for the five gigabytes with no cap. That's not what I meant to get. So I've been stuck with that. I did actually mean to get the 15 gigabytes with the 500 megabyte cap per day. And it's okay because there's literally Wi-Fi everywhere. Even in the street, walking up the Dubai Marina Strip, there's Wi-Fi in the street. I don't know where it's coming from. Whoever this DU is, it, it's there. Every venue seems to have Wi-Fi that you can connect to. The only thing is that they always ask you for your email and your date of birth and your phone number and your name. So I'm sure I'm gonna start getting spammed at some point by all these places. Um, you know, Dubai airport, really fast Wi-Fi, everywhere, everywhere has got Wi-Fi. So there's the odd time when you need it, you know, it might be when you're outside waiting for a taxi or something like that, or you need to look at Google Maps or something like that on your phone. In terms of money, I would say bring some cash, but you don't need much. Literally everywhere accepts, accepts cash, even like the shitty little taxis that look like they're from 1970s, um, they accept credit cards and debit cards. So you can get by by card only, but I say just bring a bit of cash to have used a bit. I was trying to think, where have I actually used cash? I can't remember, but I have definitely because it's gone down quite a bit. I still need, I need to get a little bit more out. Phil's NatWest card kept getting blocked, kept being declined for some reason. It wasn't the fact he's got no money on it. It's just, you know, randomly some things it would allow, some things it wouldn't. Now I've had that problem with NatWest before where I've been away and it's just blocked my card. Um, from doing stuff when I went to Los Angeles as well. My Halifax card just wouldn't work. Like when I went to check into a hotel, it just completely blocked. I spent more than half an hour on the phone trying to get hold of get hold of the support to be able to unblock my card to let me pay and they couldn't do it. It was taking ages, so it didn't. Luckily, the hotel ended up letting me stay and then I sorted it out the next day. What I would say is get a wise card. I'm gonna put a link in the show notes to this um, because why a wise debit card, they're really good. They're the cheapest way to transact in a foreign currency anyway for your exchange rates. They've got, you know, they've got virtual cards that you can use. So if you don't trust an online retailer, for example, you can just at the tap of a button create a virtual card and use the, that card details for that one retailer or 
other retailers that you don't trust and at any point you can block that card and not affect your physical card that you've got with you or you can just delete that card and then create another virtual card or have multiple virtual cards and they pay interest like three and a half to four and a half percent and there's over 50 currencies it's what i actually use all the time which is why i rate them i'm not sponsored by wise at all in any way shape or form but if they want to please feel free yeah honestly i just think it's the best thing for you and you will save a ton of money on your foreign exchange fees one other thing on on payments so lots of places give you the choice to pay either in your local currency or in dirhams now wise will tell you and it's probably smart that they do that you should always pay in the dirhams like the local currency whatever country you're in particularly if you're using a wise card because you get the exact exchange rate the issue is is if you decide in the uae if you pay using pounds in the uae there's an extra tax that they add on as well like an actual tax so yes you'll get the crappy exchange rate you'll also get your provider back home that will charge you fees and they will charge you tax here as well for the fact that you've paid in a foreign currency. It's not an admin fee, it's a tax. Definitely pay in dirhams, but I would definitely avoid using a normal bank card from home. Get a wise bank card, transfer some money over there. It's complete, you know, it's completely safe. I've, I've used them for ages. On terms of safety, I felt really safe here. To be honest with you, I felt really safe. I've not felt like having to look around. I've got that normal London paranoia about me where I'm looking at people anyway, but I've not seen any issues really. So if you're ordering taxis, you can order taxis on the Kareem app. It's their own by Uber or use local taxis with a meter. I personally say it's probably safer if you're on your own to order a taxi on Kareem because it's tracked exactly where you're going, picking up from, where you're going to, who your driver is. It shows a picture of your driver. It's got the copy of their license. Inside the car, it also shows their picture. And obviously then you can see them. Is it is it the person who is meant to be picking you up? Also for another reason, not just on safety, is a couple of times this has happened. The other night, they obviously saw us come out of a bar and thought, you know, stupid drunken tourists. But there was some taxis which are private taxis, but they don't look like taxis. So I'm a bit dubious of them anyway. They look like they could be people just picking you up. But he was trying to charge 80 dirhams for a two minute journey and we knew you know we knew where we were we're not far from where we where we were staying and he wanted to do a fixed price 80 dirhams for a two minute journey we told him to bugger off of course the journey only cost us 15 dirhams in a local taxi it happened but on saturday when we went jet skiing as well someone has charged us 50 dirhams you know where they was waiting outside telling us to cancel our kareem that we'd ordered because they they said that kareem are going to charge us the same we only got charged like 30 dirhams like on the cream app for that journey. So it wasn't much of a difference, not like the other one, but still they're trying to take the piss. So I just say cream app or use the local taxi with the meter. It clearly says tax on the top and they light up. You know, like in New York taxis, then you've, you're probably a bit safer and uh, going to get the better rate that way. And on cream, uh, one thing that came up was uh, at one point I thought, I thought one of the cabbies tried to rip me off. Uh, because I looked at the statement for one of the payments on Kareem and it said like you know, like nine dirhams extra for a waiting, a waiting charge. And I was like, but the guy weren't waiting at all. Like we were there outside when he arrived and we got straight out the taxi at the other end. So, we looked, so I messaged them to find out, well, what is, what are we waiting for? Like, what was we charged for? Because we weren't waiting. And they said, no, it's not that. It's if you're going under 16 kilometers per hour, every minute that you're doing that, you get charged a certain amount on top for their time, basically. So that's what that is. If you see it on your thing, it's not because they're trying to rip you off saying that they've, they've waited for you outside your hotel and they haven't. It's because of the waiting fee if you're going under 16 kilometers an hour. But anyway, let me try and wrap this up quicker. I thought this would be like five minutes. English is not as good as I thought for a lot of people. I thought, you know, I'm from London and I speak English as an English person with a London accent. A London accent is the least of the difficult of all the accents in the whole of the UK, in my opinion. But I've been told a couple of times that my English accent is difficult to understand. And I'm thinking like, compared to who? Like, where, who is speaking English who is easier to understand than someone from England who's from London? I was like, what? 
But anyway, that's what I've been told a few times. I'd say drink bottled water. One thing is the cold taps are hotter than my hot taps at home. So that's one thing, that's a reason too. I know some places do have like these coolers where it makes it really cold, but I've also seen like some funny colored water come out from the taps when I turn them on. Not from the drink, not from the, the tap where I brush my teeth actually, it's like the, the showering one. So maybe they've got a different water system, I don't know, but like for about a second, like this funny colored water comes out and then it goes normal again. But just that alone, and the fact that the hotels give you so much bottled water, it's not like, you know, staying in a Holiday Inn in the UK where they give you one bottle of water for like two people to share between you. They're giving you like four or five bottles of water per day, per person. So yeah, I would definitely say drink lots of bottled water. It's really cheap here. You can buy like Evian and stuff, which is more expensive. The buy the local water, it's filtered and bottled and stuff. It's, it's super cheap. As I've already said, there's lots to do here. You really don't need to worry if you're on a budget, if you're not well off, but if you are very well off, exactly the same. There's tons for you to do. Um, you'll still get to take awesome photographs and have a really great time, even if you've only got like three to four days to spend. I think that's a worry for a lot of people not wanting to come out here. I think the cultural thing I spoke about earlier, that was something that was, to be honest with you, it was, I was a bit like, I was listening to people before about this cultural stuff and I was thinking, well, that doesn't really sound a bit like me, but honestly, my few days here, and I will update it at the end of my three weeks, but the few days here, I'm sort of like, well, nah, it's rubbish, load of rubbish. I've only heard it from people who've never been here anyway. So there we are. Take things like that with a pinch of salt. But yeah, if you've not got a ton of money, if you're on a budget, whatever it is, there's, there's gonna be a ton for you to do. There's lots of people on their own here. I've noticed so many people just eating out on their own and just walking around on their own or whatever. Now I'm on my own, um, so hopefully I'm gonna make, be able to make a friend or two. I'll be trying to do a bit of networking, like business networking when I'm out here. I'm also working, this is not holiday for me, I'm working most of the time. It's just a different for me to work in and also explore somewhere new. As you may or may not know, I've set up a business here as well before I came here. Last thing that I'd say, last couple of bits that, you know, basics when you're traveling, but this time of year, it's mid-June right now. It's super hot. For me, it's super hot. You know, yesterday, I think it was, I think it was 37 degrees, the actual air temperature, or 38 degrees, the actual air temperature. But the app said it, it's like 38 degrees, but feels like 47. I have never been in 47 degree heat in my life. Um, it was so hot. So, and it's not as hot as it's going to get either. The, the receptionist downstairs, Chris, he said to at, at Barcelo residences, when I came and I said about how hot it is, he was like, ah, oh, it's not that hot yet, it's getting there. Him stood there with his suit and tie, and he said, in four to six weeks from now, it's going to feel like hell. So I think it's gonna get a lot hotter, and yeah, I'm not gonna be here to experience it, thank God. I'm gonna be back in the UK, but sunscreen is a big one, even if you're not in the sun. I learned this in, in Mexico one day when I got extremely burnt sitting under shade all day, but I was extremely burnt. The worst sunburn I've ever had in my life and it took weeks to clear off. So wear sunscreen, probably you wanna have a factor fit. Um, it's not gonna affect you getting a tan here, I assure you. Um, wear loose clothing, lots of bottled water. And if you're wondering if it ever rains in Dubai, well, I Googled it because Phil was like, it never rains here. Like they, they must um, bring water in like for whatever, because it's a desert. But it does rain here, it does. It rains a whole 25 days a year on average from the first Google result that came up and I didn't bother to check any others, but I'm gonna go with that. 25 days is seems fine to me and uh, apparently mostly in February, so there we go. Anyway, that's me. I'm gonna wrap this up now. Anyway, I've just realized having looked at footage and uploading it so our video guy can sort it out, it's actually four days, right? So it's three fun days, but uh, it's actually four days this vlog covers. So where I've been talking about three days in Dubai all along, it's actually four. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching the first few days in Dubai. If you've enjoyed it, please like and comment and subscribe. If you really liked it, please share it with someone else who maybe you want to travel to Dubai with, but I'm going to share more. And if you have any questions, 
please feel free to leave them in the comment boxes or get in contact with me directly on Instagram. It's Aaron Henry on Instagram. If I have any other videos that may answer your questions, which I probably do because I have an absolute shit ton of videos, then yeah, absolutely. I will see about getting them uploaded for you and answering your questions. But in, honestly, come to Dubai. It's an awesome place. Even if you've only got a few days, we've done so much in that time and had a really great time. And even if I went home today, I would have been, I'd be really happy with what I've had, but I've got another two and a half weeks left. So I'm gonna get on with some work now, but thank you for watching. Goodbye.